trying to get himself. He really desperately wants to move. Look at that. Donati 14. 16 8 for Alan Prost. And oh, that's 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 and Senna went out first. The V8 Ford powered McLaren into overdrive. I don't think we're going to see any improvement from Schumacher on this time. In fact, after the free practice this morning, oh, and a big slide into the stadium there. He laid rubber as he went left. Lost all his breath, it was kicked out of him. And Jos Verstappen as well was saying how difficult all there are these Schumacher. He's looking for a Grand Prix car, and they're only accelerating actually, they're not maintaining it, but again. Fantastic to watch yesterday, uh, like a rally driver, and we normally shoot Schumacher with So a new car for you to look out for, and Jos Verstappen very much on the pace here so far. And give Ferrari their first Grand Prix victory. Villeneuve is now three seconds behind him. You can see how difficult the conditions are with the Ferrari writhing and wriggling as he turns in and puts the 700 horsepower down. This is the sign of real genius here. Just look at the way that he controls that car, almost treating it with contempt. The wet conditions look at him just playing with that car with supreme confidence it's just so rare to have a driver of such a level of ability that is so far above anybody else lap times are four seconds slower than they were when the rain was at its least and he's still fishtailing around with the car very very delicate throttle control here and uh, as the drivers are going around the concentration has to be absolutely immaculate and he still keeps doing it i think he's enjoying it three quarters of a second faster into that not too aggressive on the curves. Watch the exit. John Lacey's time, 145.474. Michael Schumacher coming into this. But let's uh, just see what Michael Schumacher can do in the Ferrari. We could uh, watch some, a good display of car control from uh, Schumacher if he's in the mood. Listen to the wheel spin fighting for traction. Really, in these conditions, all you can hope to do is just short shift and get the thing into fourth gear as soon as possible. At the end of the day, he lost 20 seconds between the end of the straight and coming back across start finish line. But look at that, just puts his right foot, buries it into the throttle. Could the conditions be changeable like this? I have to say that uh, he's some way off the pace of the Williams Renaults, 1.2 seconds off in the dry. But as he came round, so he won't actually set a time. Uh, look at this, Schumacher sliding it out of the. That's, that's how do you impress the teams because they're parked just down there. There's... So it does look as though most of these times are going to stay the same. Villeneuve in fifth place. Oh, Schumacher, absolutely a Ken stunning car control. Opposite lock one way, dirt track back the other way, and still stayed on the track. Michael Schumacher's got to climb. Now, Michael has been, to be fair to him, and he's really trying, you see how wide he runs there. To be fair to him, he has been very sotto voce about his chances here in Australia in the Ferrari. Uh, he's really, he's really going for it. He's been saying he would be very, very lucky to win and he's not all that sad. The other reason is they're running the new Peugeot Evolution 5 engine for qualifying, and Peugeot playing it safe. They're pushing the envelope too much in development. The checker flag is out. Michael Schumacher has taken his first pole position for Ferrari, and look, that was Jack Villeneuve. Damon Hill is being pushed. That's what we're wrong down in the centre chicane. And then still, in spite of those two moments, a lazy, look at a lazy. He's driving the bit of the runner. You think that was a go-kart, the way he chased the tail of the car around. Five-tenths down, five-tenths, probably two-tenths of what was lost in that other moment. Again, oh. ragged edge. Let's take a look. This was, in fact, coming out of the final corner that started off this lap, and you can see he really had that car sliding around there. You can see he's a great rain driver, can't you? It looks as if it was raining now, what he's doing. He is indeed going to close up on a lacy. The Lacey has been very frustrated, and oh, well, you see, now, do you know, that incident that we just saw then is only controllable by someone of a Lacey's sort of reactions. You know, a lot of drivers would have lost control and spun there, Alan. I agree. I mean, he's got fantastic car control. Overtaking here is virtually impossible. So you've got to go. Oh, look at that Lacey. Glorious power over there. 
before he can get to grips with uh, Schumacher, he's got the catch and pass Damon Hill, and look how hard he's trying. Absolutely, and look at that car control from John Lacey, who was really showing signs of getting to grips with the better top. Yes, indeed, that really was dreadful for him. Uh, it seemed again, and Lacey is right on the limit. And lots of tyres in the pit lane. Well, uh, Lacey, look at him fighting that wheel, and again correcting oversteer as uh, he went through Massonate down Casino Square towards Mirabeau. This is great driving from a Lacey. And John Lacey's first flying lap, two minutes, one second, point two three eight. Oh, he got the back of the car right. He had the lock on the lock stop, so he got it back. Eddie Irvine in the Jordan Peugeot, David Coulthard down in sixth position, Rubens Barrichello is seventh. That's the work that a team and a driver, that's the partnership a team and a driver needs. And that was a very, very graphic example. Oh, John Alesi got a tank slapper, and that will lose again further time. And this is going to be a case of John Alesi overdriving the Ferrari trying to force time and I clearly would think that Benetton and Renault in particular are going to try and preserve as many sets as possible because there are no points for pole position, there are points for wins. John Lacy an absolutely fabulous start, oh he gets it completely crossed up there, oh no, too much. Oh look at that, look at that, oh magnificent, <laughs> that's worth a pole position performance, although that put him on the podium for me, who's entry into the first for that right left. Can he call it back? Opposite lock entering, not even in the middle of the corner, entering the corner. A lazy fire. Oh, he's lost it, he's lost it. And this time he isn't going to recover. Bang! Well, Lucas Berger, again, using lots of throttle. Look, you can see how much balance he has to use with throttle and the steering wheel to keep the back end. And I thought Alesi was getting out of shape, and Rubens Barrichello, the man who is provisionally fastest, has gone back out onto the circuit. And look at Berger! And this is great. This is what Formula One ought to be about. It's a question, I think, of being... Again, look at Berger! Look at the black rubber left! Look at this! <laughs> when we have seen him do this throughout this qualifying session. And Gerhard, really just unhappy with the car chassis set up. He had a big moment down in the escape road into Mirabeau. Oh, look at that glorious four-wheel zip. There's a man enjoying his work. Qualified third here last year, very experienced on this circuit, but he's never won here. And, uh, well, he's... Oh, look at that! Absolutely! Oh, that absolutely magnificent! Six is the time to try and beat, so he could see an improvement on his time from Thursday as he oh, really slides it. It's, it's, it's arbitrary as to who gets that camera on which weekend. Gerhard Berger, three tenths of a second slower than Damon Hill, but it would still mean an improvement for Berger if he can keep the gap all about the same. And again, quite uh, lively getting into the swimming pool section there. Gerhard Berger really trying very, very hard indeed. And again, dirt tracking it as he came out of the section. Just laying rubber left, right and centre. And Jean Alesi all prepared again. Cleaner out this time. He just gets a, a much, oh, and almost, almost... But to be three tenths of a second, oh, Berger slides. Look at the way he just threw the car into the Oscar. Especially in that high downforce situation. Yes, and this wall, oh, that's, that's a good slide from Gerhard Berger. 22,000 down, also on track is Damon Hill, but Gerhard Berger's time was a tenth of a second quicker than Hill, and Berger glorious on the exit out of the Jim Clark chicane. Slides that Benetton in a proper four-wheel drift. People complain these cars don't oversteer. Well, I tell you what, they must have their eyes shut because there's plenty of it here today.